yo, yo, yeah, it's your boy Cool Cow, the original Star Child. This is Hip Hop BC before corporate, and I'm welcoming you to the Park Jam series. You see, like I told y'all before, we cover everything that originated in the beginnings of hip hop. Park jams were essential to hip hop becoming what it became. Now, we're at Katona Park today, the tools of war jam, and we're getting across the bridge to the promised land where the DJs are, and I want y'all to come along. One. Start y'all, baby. Come on, let's go. Yo, 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 this is Cool Cow, the original Star Child, hip hop BC before corporate. Now we do a little bit on the MC and DJ producer level. We have the world famous Omegle Day. That's my old junior high school right there, named it after Omegle. And I'll be host today, we in the world famous Shara. But meanwhile, I ran to two very good and before corporate pioneers and laid it down before there was no sound, before the money was hanging around, before the big record deals knocked them down and acted like we was clowns, yo. The great peso, the world famous field sport. AK on the graffiti tip, you know we do graffiti too. Peso, 131. My man Angel Speak Low. Producer, engineer, extraordinaire. Welcome to your time show, man. What's up, what's up? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. We gonna knock this up, peso gotta break out. Peso gotta break out. Yo, peso. Let me ask you a question, baby. I've been knowing you since we was here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, since we was here. Come on. We, 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 had, we had Jerry Girls before that. But anyway, when did you start writing first and then transition into graffiti? When did you decide to become, because you named yourself the Great Bay Show. I know you were writing before that, but before that you were writing. So which one came first? Just tell me how it went down. Well, graffiti came first because my my brother and my cousins, Spade 130, was like one of the first big bus riders in Houston Haven with, with Tree 127, Top Cat, uh, 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 T-Rex, you know what I'm saying? My brother Max came with them too. Not only that, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and stay high. The graffiti started on the bus first. So, me and Bird 130, that's that's right, 130, uh, little brother. We was the lookout for a little, we were too little to, to, to write at the time. But we was the scouts, we look out for the, that little pop stuff in the bus yard. So as we grew up, the first one there was Cop 5. And when Brad 130, they, they used to write our names while we look up for them, you know, look out for them. At the same time, we was practicing our style. I was doing this pace, so, I was a hustler. So all the Spanish motherfuckers were on the pay, so I was about getting that money all the time. I was a hustler. You know, so I took the name Peso and took it to the train. And then, and if you break down Peso, it's peace, deep, equality, spirit to us, yes, Right? So there's nothing greater than that. So I call it the great Peso. And there's nothing greater than money. So it's Peso. You know what I'm saying? So, and so I just kept that like that. Just kept flying with it. So, you already established your graffiti career. Yes. You're the great pace. 
Two Hall, one Broadway, tearing shit up. I already know. Now, what did you start whining? You get to that very quickly. Well, when did you start to start whining? Well, I never was a, a rapper, but I used to carry equipment for the Treacherous Three and my brother, right, Mr. Nasty Kenny G. Whoa. So I hung out with Spoonie and all of them, so we all grew up with you. Spoonie G. There you go. Spoonie G. 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 Spoonie
sir. This is Cool Cow, the original star job. And this is Hip Hop BC before corporate. Before they, you know what they are, right? right. Stuck their hands in it right. before they polluted it and before they changed it. Now, I have the distinct pleasure and honor of talking to one of my boys I've been knowing for at least 40 years now. I think maybe 35. How you knew me 40 damn years and I'm only 27? Oh, well that's crazy then. I must be delusional. <laughs> I must be delusional. <laughs> I welcome to our show my man, the legendary, the one and only, Rocky, formerly of the Furious Five and formerly of the Funky Four. An original Funky Four. Not that plus one more thing, which is good too. Right. But he's an original Funky Four race. Facts. Okay? Facts. Okay. Facts. Yo, Rock, how you doing, baby? I'm great, my brother. I gotta, I gotta stop for smoke weed to shake my hand, because that's what we do. Right. But anyway, yo, Rod, tell me real quick, I know you're rare busy, you gotta go. Okay. When did you first pick up a microphone and decide this is what you want to do? 1978. Very good. You sound like that. You got right to the point, 78. There's no, I dreamed about it for five years, I wrote three rhymes, no. I practiced. I, I, was, I was a toy in 78, in the, in, the, in the winter months of 78, January, February. Right. Um, <laughs> but then March, uh, I did a show, I did a, my, my first jam with the Brothers Disco. There you go. Uh, it was a battle against the Little Brothers. Yes. Uh, in um, City. It, it was the Little Brothers are from Co op City, City, Section yeah. 5. Aaron and uh, DJ Aaron, DJ Leo, shout right. outs to them. Right. And, um, and the battle was at Boston Seacore Community yes. Center. Yes. And uh, we gave them a little spanking. And um, it was there that I became an official member of the Funky uh, the Brothers Disco and they became the, right, the Funky right. Four. Very good. Um, your history is well documented, so I'm not really exposing any new light or anything. What is, what is one of your distinct memories of being with the Furious Five? Once again, Rob is a member of the Furious Five. Um, long story short, they invited him to join the group because they needed five MCs and Rob was like definitely butter and he could sing. Rob was the shit. I remember. I seen him do it, okay? Now, he joins the Furious Five. What's one of your distinct memories of being with the Furious Five MCs? The Grandmaster Flash. Um, well, one of the one of my uh, favorite uh, memories is I guess the night that I became a member of the Furious Five. Uh, Grandmaster Flash wasn't our DJ that night. Actually, our DJ was Where's DJ Charlie Chase. Charlie Chase, I know. Uh, and that was before the Cold Crush Brothers uh, wow. Excellent. came to be. Excellent. And uh, so that was, that was actually in the summer of 1979. Um, and um, that happened at Forest Houses Community Center. Um, my, my legendary brother, rest in peace, the original DJ Eminem, and uh, his brother, my legendary brother, DJ Cool Joe, uh, they're from Lambert Houses. They, um, they asked me if I would be down to uh, MC with them, uh, with their crew, because uh, they was my, my crew, because I'm, I'm from Lambert Houses, right, so right. they was a local crew from Lambert, and every time they was, uh, they would DJ outside around Lambert Houses, if I was around, I'd rock on the mic with them. Gotcha, gotcha. And so they asked me if I would be down to rock with them at uh, Forest Houses Community Center, and so, you know, there's my people, I said definitely, so um, they hired the Furious Four, uh, to rock with them at the same jam four. and um, uh, the Furious Four, myself, uh, would practice every day to perform at that jam at DJ Charlie Chase's house, which was like a few blocks from where I lived in Lambert. Did he look out the window and he was on the first floor? Yes, he was on the ground floor, that's right, that's right. Yes, sir. Yep. And so he lived in the ground floor apartment, we would go knock on his window and he would open the window and, and we'd be standing right there at his window and he would hear because sometimes we go inside but a lot of times he DJ right there at the window. That's hip hop, yo. That's real Bronx style hip hop. Okay. So when you got the job with the Furious, and I remember when all that went down, and the talk was that you were so dope that they had to ask you to the funky, which you did, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. Now, you become a face in that crew that had already been established, but you create your own identity. 
Yeah, before I got to them, yes. And when you got to them, you still stood out. See, everybody thinks because Melody Mel is the main voice of the message. Rahim is very important to that group. I know what he brought to the table. And he might not talk about that. I do. I made a post one day about he's a first year pop singer. And he is. He is. He won't talk. To this day, he won't say nothing about it. It's I heard you, brother. It's not for me to say. <laughs> it is for you to say. I said it. Cool cow is the host of this. If I say Raheem's the first, he's the first. Now, it's for one. What are you what doing today? Okay, okay. <laughs> what are you doing today? What am I doing today? Yes, sir. Um, listening to um, classic hip hop in Katona Park. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, just vibing out. You know what I mean? Smoking. Okay. Um, breathing. Okay. You know, um, but what is your career doing? Because I understand that you've done a lot of stuff recently. In the last couple of years, when you've expanded your horizon and you've reached out beyond just the hip hop, I believe they call you an uh, actor. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm an actor. You know, I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm an actor. Uh, I'm a poet. Uh, uh, I don't regard myself as a teacher, but some of you guys. I just know some stuff and, 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 share and it, I'm yeah. happy to share it with right. people. That's what it is. We had um, many talks on the phone and yeah. conference calls. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not a master of anything. I, and I don't want to be, I always want to be a student. I don't ever want to be a master. Because masters, once, once you master some shit, you don't learn. Anything. You can't learn anymore. Right. right. You think you know everything right? when you mastered some shit. You gotcha, know what I mean? Got you, got you. You know what I mean, Melly Mel? No, I ain't saying Oh, shots fired, shots fired by the legendary Rocky in all the ladies' dreams, know what I mean? Anyway, I know you're mad busy today. Yeah. It's a pleasure and an honor to speak to you, my legendary brother. Mm -hmm. We talk all the time any damn way, but I got you on this now. You're a part of Hip Hop BC, before corporate. When we say, okay, I gotta remind about before corporate means before the record deals, the crazy money, the cars, the bling. And yeah, why don't you keep it extra crispy before those cunts? There you go. All right, before the cunts. I'm glad you said it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> exactly. We're not gonna talk about what they were, but anyway. It's a pleasure to have you, man, okay? It's a pleasure well, to be here, my brother. I love you, baby. Love you too, brother. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. No doubt. Yes, yes, y'all, yes, sir. Yo, this is Cool Cow, the original Star Child, and my man Definite representing Hip Hop BC, Hip Hop Before Corporate. As you just seen, we steady stay getting at the roots of real hip hop that started before the money. We just talked to my man, the great Peso 131. The 131 comes from his graffiti name, but he joined the group to fill his floor. Rocking it, rocking it, you should be rocking it. Rocking hip hop, BC, rocking it. We talked to my man, Grandmaster Cass, from the legendary world for world famous Cold Crush Brothers, DJ and MC, still doing his thing. We talked to my man, Raheem, from the world famous first hip, real hip hop group on record, the Funky Four plus one more, Funky Four, and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee, and my man, last but definitely not least, Eddie Cheaper, Cheaper, Cheaper. Eddie Cheaper laid it down on the mic and the turntables doing his thing. So as we do continue on to the break of dawn, giving you what you need, giving you what you please, yo, Hip Hop BC all day. Y'all need to be watching. I'm out. Yo, yo, yo. Yes, sir, it's Cool Cow, original star child. This is Hip Hop BC before corporate. It's my honor and pleasure to welcome and talk to one of the foundation, one of the concrete laying, brick laying, building, building cats of this game, an MC and DJ that we call Hip Hop. Okay, I've been knowing him for mad years, so I already know what it is, but you all need to know what it is. My man, Grandmaster Cass, what up, baby? Beast, what up, Cal? How you, Cass? Okay. You already know, you already know. There you my go. Yo, okay. Cass, you know I love you. I love what you do, I love what you did. I love what you're doing right now. You represent the game totally on another level. The Cass our age, I'm really trying to do. Cass has been holding down for 30 years. All day, every day. Let me ask you a question, Cass, don't worry. Yeah. Now, you know I already know this, but when did you really start with the DJ slash MC? Because I knew you as Cass No Fly, the DJ. Now, when did you do that? And, and 
transpose into the MC. I mean, I kind of did dual, you know, like like in the tradition of DJ Hollywood and Love Books Starsky, who are pretty much DJs, but they use the mic to accompany, you know, the song. <laughs> as far as like a rhymer, I started going full time MCing when I joined the Cold Crush Brothers. There you go. <laughs> we had uh, two DJs in the crew already, so my DJ skills were needed. And I was just recruited just to, you know, whip the MC into shape. Into shape. So that's when I really became a full-time MC. What was your most favorite, if you can remember this right now, moment as a DJ slash MC and a performer? Because to me, you're in all three categories. And you're a legend. That's called me a legend. You're a legend. So what, what is your most special moment that you, that you can recall when you said, yo, you went home that night, laid down in bed and said, yo, they know why I am that. I can't pick. Oh, yeah, so a man. lot of yeah, moments. So no, no, I, no, I'm getting ready to say, I, I don't have a lot of those. <laughs> I mean, once it happens once, you you, you kind of reach a plateau, and you once you cross over it, right. you're like, I'm there, I'm arrived, I'm already, you know, I'm in. Gotcha, um, gotcha. One night I was playing at a club called the Blue Lagoon across the street from the PAL in the Bronx. Oh, I remember that. Hell yeah. And, um, yep. I was doing a thing called the Farmer's Ball. Remember when everybody used to wear yes, farmers? Yes, the Farmer's Ball. I had like a Farmer's Ball, and I heard about this DJ named Theodore that from the South Bronx that was supposed to be as fast as Flash. Right, right, right. You know? right. So I invited right. him up to play with me at the Blue Lagoon. Come to find out, he was my best friend from when I was a kid, <laughs> Teddy. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I knew him as Teddy. I didn't yeah. know he became a DJ. He didn't right. know I was casting over Fly. Wow. But um, that night we were at the we were playing and stuff, and I was playing a record. I was cutting back and forth, and my met my partner Disco Wiz was Wiz. like, "Yo, faster, cut faster, cut faster," and I was going faster and faster and faster. He kept going faster, 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 and I was going faster and faster. And then he started going Grandmaster, Grandmaster, because Grandmaster Flash of course, of course. was the fastest yeah, DJ really, really, in hip hop yeah. up to yeah. that point. Right, right. And then it, it, he starts going Grandmaster, and then the crowd start going Grandmaster, Grandmaster, Grandmaster. From that night on, I, I was Grandmaster Cash. There you go. Yeah, you know I mean? now, so I think that was the first time that I felt that's like, a great answer. Yeah, I, you know I, what? I, I crossed over. Because it didn't happen yesterday, or, or, or last night, or two weeks ago. That happened when? Cash? Give me a year, approximately. This was like '78, yo, '77. Hip hop before corporate. He developed his identity in 1978. Now, I don't want to keep you here because I think you're mad busy. And me and you go back like from day one. Y'all had a routine off one of my records, Rockin' Time. Yeah, they, yeah, dance routine. Yeah. They called it the tick, the ticks, right? Ticks, yeah. yeah. Okay? Um, What are you doing right now? Um, Well, I'm the co-producer and the host of the uh, Cortona Park Jams. There you go. Real I've been the host of the Tools of War Summer Park Jams for 16 years. Real hip hop. I'm doing the hip hop sightseeing tours for 17 years right. called Hush Tours right. here in New York. Right. Um, other than that, still recording, still traveling. I'm on the road with Kumo D, touring with him. Um, and I'm, I'm still making music and um, I'm just still doing what I do, man. Doing what you do, right? Yeah, I'm trying to preserve this culture, man. As long as we stay around, nobody can't take it from Excellent, us. my brother. <laughs> as long as we no, here. he said it. No, what's your favorite line, your favorite saying under your uh, DMC Productions? We are what? Uh, we all we got. Oh, and hip hop didn't invent anything. Hip hop reinvented there everything. There you go. There you go. One love. Grandmaster Cass, Cool Cow, we the Star Child Hip Hop BC before corporate. For Tone the Park, the Park Jam series, Tools of War. This is what we do. Bringing it from the womb. The very beginning. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Cool Cow, the original Star Child. Hip Hop BC before corporate. Now, it's my pleasure and distinct honor to present to you guys someone who played a major role in this culture before corporate. He was a combination of beats and music and the great voice who brought the party together in one little package. I don't care what nobody tells you, all the MCs that follow learned a lot from this man and his counterpart. I don't care what they tell you.
corporation something greedy ass hands in. For the big deal, for the banks, for the mega contracts. Now we come from the beginning. Any chief is straight hard. Who counts straight wrong? Hey, what made you decide from the very beginning to join this? Tell us. I don't know, my love for the music and everything. But I'm born and raised in Harlem, but I made a good living in the Bronx with clubs like Disco Fever, Club 371, Starters, Ballroom, all the places. And we've been doing a, a great thing, and we put a lot of DJs and MCs on, always willing to give somebody a chance if they knew how to handle something. You had to have some kind of skills. We didn't just give them the microphone to anybody.
Yes, yes, y'all. To the beat, y'all. You don't stop that body rock. To the beat that has no end, this has been the original Star Child, Cool Cow, and my main man, my boy, Definite. And this has been another hot to death episode of Get by BC before corporate. We just want you to check us out further. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hip Hop BC. Check us out on Facebook and follow us because we tell the truth. We get into places that cats have never explored before. I'm getting up close and personal. 411 for real, for real. And this is just the beginning. See y'all later. One.